Hey guys, so to start this video off, I'm going to have to do a bit of an introduction. My name is Megan. I'm 20 years old and I have two daughters. Sophia is three and I had her when I was 17. Izzy is 16 months old and I had her when I was 19. Now, those of you that know me, you probably know a little bit about my birth stories. Sophie was a typical hospital birth. She was born in the hospital with an epidural and it was not a bad experience. I actually really, really enjoyed it. The first thing that I said to Brett, my husband, after she was born was, let's have 10 more. And then everybody looked at me like I was crazy. I don't know. <laughs> but with Izzy, I decided to have a home birth with a midwife. And I want to talk about this because I feel like there's a lot of misinformation out there about home birth and about natural childbirth in general. I chose to have a home birth because I was told that home birth is just as safe, if not safer, than hospital birth. I was convinced from documentaries like The Business of Being Born and Pregnant in America that the hospital was a scary place and I shouldn't have my baby there. I was convinced that giving birth at home would be so empowering and so much better than giving birth in the hospital. But for me, the reality didn't quite turn out like I had hoped. Now, laboring at home was great. I loved laboring at home. I was so happy. In between contractions, I was laughing and I was telling my husband how much I loved him. I was on a birth high. It was really cool. But by about seven centimeters, I wasn't laughing anymore. By eight centimeters, I was screaming and I was begging to go to the hospital and get an epidural. But of course, it was too late for that. When Izzy was born, she had some complications. She had a really short cord, and my midwife had to cut her cord on perineum and then manually go in and rotate her shoulders because she had shoulder dystocia. Um, it was very scary. She was born not breathing. Her first Apgar score was only three, and there were a few moments where we didn't know what was going to happen. It was pretty scary, and I didn't even realize how scary it was. And it was very, very hard on me, too. Like... Like I said, my first thing that I said after I had Sophie was that I was like wanted to have 10 more children. It was a great experience. I wanted to do it again. But after I had Izzy, my first thoughts were just that I wanted to go to sleep and I never wanted to do that again. I lied to myself for a while and told myself that it was great because it was supposed to be great. Everybody told me that it was supposed to be great, but it didn't actually end up being that great. And while I liked doing it naturally up to a point, I do not think that I would choose to birth at home again. And it's not just because of my personal experience. I have learned a lot more since having my birth. And some of the stuff that I've learned actually makes me really, really angry because I feel like I was lied to. I feel like I was led on and led to believe things that were not true by the natural childbirth community. The natural childbirth community loves to use studies from Europe to convince you that midwifery and home birth in America are safe. The problem is midwifery as practiced in Europe is completely different from what's being practiced in America today. In Europe, midwives attend an institution, they attend college. In Europe, they work with hospitals, they have hospital privileges, and they send women who are no longer low risk to the hospital. Now in America, that is supposed to happen. Only low risk women are supposed to be taken on by midwives. But you have a lot of midwives that are taking on women who are not low risk. They're taking on breech births. They're taking on twin births. They're taking on triplet births. They're taking on V-backs. They're taking on all of these births, gestational diabetes and preeclampsia and things that they should not be dealing with, things that they are not trained to handle. And the problem you're running into is that a lot of midwives don't even know how to handle a normal complication. I want to tell you guys a story about a baby boy named Gavin Michael. His mother sought care with a home birth midwife named Christy Collins, a CPM, a certified professional midwife. Um, CPMs don't have to go to college to get their education. They just train from another midwife and then they take a test and then they're a midwife. When Gavin's mother was 42 weeks pregnant, they went and did an ultrasound and they found out that there was no amniotic fluid left. There, zero. Amniotic fluid was zero. Instead of immediately recommending that the mother transfer care to an OB, the midwife assured her that everything would be fine. 
The midwife then took to Facebook to publicly ask what she should do. She went to Jan Tritton's page. Jan Tritton is the editor of Midwifery Today. Jan publicly posted the question and many, many uh, midwives, doulas, and birth, childbirth educators replied to the question and said not to do anything. They all said that it would be totally fine. Three days after they initially found out that there were zero fluids, the midwife finally recommended the mother transfer. She went to the hospital, had an emergency C-section. They worked on Gavin for 47 minutes, and it was too late. The baby died because the midwife didn't know what to do. The midwife was not educated enough to know that zero fluids was a problem, and the mother, the woman that she trusted to care for her and to care for her baby and to keep them safe, did not do that. Now, I'm all for choosing your birth experience, and I think that birth should be a good experience for the mother, but I don't think that it's going to be a good, empowering experience if the baby dies. I don't think that that's a good experience. I don't think that's something that we should be holding up. But the problem is, the natural childbirth community is not doing anything to address these deaths. This is not an isolated incident. This is happening time and time again, and this is just one of the most recent examples. This is a problem. It's a very serious problem. And the problem is that the midwives defend each other before they defend the mother. Everybody is silent about it now. If you post about it on Midwifery Today's wall, they will ban you. They will block you from commenting and they will delete your questions. Jan Tritton has deleted commenting on her page. They deleted everything to do with Gavin and they're pretending it doesn't exist. That's the problem that you're running into now. We are trying to get justice for babies that have died due to negligent midwives. And you would think that the good midwives out there would care. You would think that they would be fighting for these midwives to be held accountable because they're making their whole profession look bad. But instead, they're sticking up for them and they're blaming the parents and saying that the parents shouldn't have trusted the midwife, which is ridiculous because what are you there for if not to keep the mom and the baby safe and if not to know when something is a problem? Let's talk statistics. The Midwives Alliance of North America, MANA, released their death rates recently. They kept them hidden for a really long time, and it was a huge problem. And when I first found out that they were keeping their death rates hidden, I was appalled because they released all their other rates. They released their C-section rates, and they released their transfer rates, and they released everything else, but they didn't release death rates, which is stupid because who cares if you have a really low c-section rate or a really low transfer rate if those low intervention rates come with the cost of more dead babies. That is not a good thing. Sometimes interventions are necessary. So anyway, they finally released them and the problem now that you see is that their death rates are three times higher than the death rates in a hospital at least three times higher, depending on what numbers you look at. Their death rates are too high. They're losing too many babies. And the problem is because the midwives don't receive enough training and they're not held to any sort of accountability. If this happens, you've got midwives that have several dead babies under their belts and they are still practicing. They are still out there taking on new clients, birthing new babies, and their new clients have no idea that they have dead babies under their belt. These new clients have no idea what they're walking into. It's a huge, huge problem. In many states, midwives are still legal completely. And since they're illegal, they just fly under the radar. And it's very hard for parents to pursue any sort of legal action if something goes wrong. I would not have another home birth. I personally would choose to go to the hospital. But I do think women deserve the right to have births at home. But I think they deserve the right to have safe births at home. And I think in order to make births safe, we need to make midwifery safe. We need to be training midwives to know what a problem is and how to deal with it. If they can't act like medical professionals, and if they can't recognize a problem and save lives, then they have no business calling themselves a midwife and trying to help women that are pregnant and going through childbirth. I will include some links below to some of the statistics, like the new MANA statistics that are out, and um, I'll include links to Gavin's story 
Uh, and there's there's a whole bunch of stories out there, but Gavin's is the one that I followed the most closely because I actually watched it happen in real time. I watched as comments got deleted after it came out that he was dead and how they just covered it up and just didn't care. I asked Midwife Free Today myself three or four different times, are you going to do an article on the dangers of low amniotic fluids? Are you going to address this? And they deleted my comments. They ignored me. They ignored everybody. The point is that they don't care. Protecting their own is more important to them than protecting birthing mothers, and that's a problem. We as women deserve to give birth wherever we want, and we deserve to have that option be as safe as possible. If you want safe births and empowering births, then we need to change the way that we are doing things with home birth in America right now. So I'll leave those links below and let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I've been really hesitant to talk about this because I don't want to offend people. I've got a lot of friends in the national childbirth community. I consider myself good friends with my midwife and I'm worried about making people mad. But I feel like this is something we really need to be talking about because I want birth to be safe and I want birth to be empowering. And I don't think that it can be empowering if it's not safe. So just let me know your thoughts.